put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King movie review. The movie opens showing us Smeagol's backstory, making him all the more tragic character, especially with what we've already seen at this point before this movie of him, and then we rejoin him, Sam, and Frodo continuing towards Mount Doom. The ring getting increasing, increasingly taking over Frodo and further endangering the mission, and Gollum still very much seems like he can't be trusted. Meanwhile, the rest of the Fellowship take a break. They, they rejoice after the climax of the second film, much deserved, and are now more hopeful that this can really be won. And in the midst of this, Pip makes a mistake, which has Gandalf taking him to, I'm probably gonna mispronounce this, Minas Tirith, which we've seen glimpses of before in the trilogy, but which we now see in full. And this vast city is beautifully done. It's highly impressive. And that pretty well covers it for the plot setup. Once again, I am not a fan of fantasy. I watch these because they're highly impressive films, and I am into mythology. I appreciate supernatural tales, as long as they get into themes, as long as they're interesting, have something to say. This does a great job of finishing off the trilogy, which, considering all the plot, all the, all the things that need resolution, that is quite a feat. And yes, the movie does have several endings, and it's really, it's a bit exhausting the first time you watch it, if, especially if you weren't prepared for that. And I, I don't really consider that a spoiler, I think everybody knows, and I'm not going to give any details about what these endings contain. But yeah, everything is resolved, and it feels earned. It feels like the way that it all works out, which again, I'm not going to give any details about, is something that was actually, excuse me, hard fought for. It is, there, there is no trace of wish fulfillment. Maybe one or two things that work out better than you might have expected them to, but all in all, it's very much that you were with these characters on this huge, long journey, and it's just really powerful to see it come to an end. And it really is a, you know, an emotional ride. And the, the, the dialogue remains this, you know, old English, but without you needing notes to follow it. 
I'd say this has the best humor of the three. This actually got several laughs out of me. This and the first viewing. And it is again a darker film than the first one. And I'm not sure if I would say... I, I can't quite determine which is the darker, this or the second movie. But anyway, both quite dark, and again, less comic relief than the first, and much of the comic relief is now about, I think, Gimli is his name, the dwarf. And the pace is again very fast. I mentioned in the plot summary that the... it starts with a, you know, them taking a break, them recuperating, recharging for, you know, the future battles of this fantasy world war, and that's pretty much all you get. That's the one break the movie takes. From there on out, it is constantly either building up or showing you something dramatic or downright a battle scene, and the battles get huge in this. I'm not sure that the battle scenes in this have really been topped. If I had to say, I'd s Avengers maybe tops it, or at least comes very close. But otherwise, and this movie is almost 10 years old now. So, yeah, basically, it's a lot bigger than it got in the second, which is really saying something. And it... And the, the action is also... It, it remains this, you know, fast, well-choreographed and a good blend of being chaotic and allowing you to follow what's going on. And the climax is really, really amazing. The, the action is also very realistic. It's, there, there are these big heroic moments that you kind of expect from, you know, basically a, a story that has identifiable characters. Most of those have, you know, and, and a story of this magnitude anyway, has these moments where it's like, and then he took on several and one, and, you know, things like that. And we have those, but no one really does something that you couldn't believe. No one is single-handedly winning, and the battle genuinely feels like it's being determined by skill, strategic opportunity, and number. It doesn't feel like, because the, at this point, the orc army is huge. It is just unbelievable. The, I think they mentioned in, like, the... I've done so much research, I don't remember exactly where it was, but I'm pretty sure I heard that it was, like, a hundred thousand, or hundreds of thousands. Of, of warriors, and I believe that. I honestly, I mean, I didn't sit down and count, but I can see that being the case. And yeah, it really feels like we might not win. The, the good guys might not come out on top. There are some times, I mean, I've already mentioned how tense this movie is. There are also some times where it really seems utterly hopeless. You are like, how are they going to get out of this? this? This is not going to end well. And, yeah, the the, the battles, there, there are losses on all sides. It, it doesn't feel like anyone is immune or anyone, you know, the good guys aren't immune and the bad guys aren't, like, really lousy shots or, you know, really easily killed either. They're, they're a genuine threat, and that makes it all the more powerful to see. It really feels like witnessing a real 
battle. And like with the second one, we, we have the pacifism. It's very much that war is just a necessary evil. Sometimes you just have to stand around and fight the evil that is trying to invade or you know, whatever the case may be. And we, we see all these family members of warriors who are just crying at the prospect of this war. And, you know, in the aftermath of a war, we might see someone looking around for their fallen comrade. And it's, it's just really powerful. You really... It, it's not war porn. It's like... It makes you understand what war is really like. It's not glorifying it, it's not saying that it's a good thing to go out and fight a war. It's, yeah, like I said, necessary evil. The anti-industrialism and environmentalism are also still very much present. The environmentalism is perhaps less pronounced than it was in the second one. The anti-industrialism is very much... There's a not-so-subtle kind of parallel drawn between industrialism and waging war. So, yeah, and combine that with the pacifism, you can pretty much tell where, where Tolkien stood on the, those particular issues. As is to be expected, this changes some things from the novel. As far as I could tell, these were pretty much all based on what, what was considered to work better on the film medium and yeah, again, not having read the original text but having read outlines, it seems like Jackson made some good decisions. I could imagine a lot of that stuff worked better on a page than on the silver screen. The effects are amazing. It sounds obvious to say that this has the best effects of the three, with it being the last and it being, you know, the big finale, the big closing chapter. And again, I, I really do want to... It's It really does finish off everything. You don't feel like there's anything left unresolved by the end of it. But, yeah, the... Again, there, there's this battle with hundreds of thousands of warriors, and obviously not all of it is completely real. I also really want to mention that this has the best and most memorable designs for creatures in general of all three movies. I don't really want to give too many of them away, but just rest assured, if you're at all into like creature feature stuff, you're gonna wanna watch this movie. Even just, yeah, it just you, you pretty much have to. It's it's awesome in that regard. And the orcs are the nastiest of the entire trilogy. Man, they are just so disgusting looking. And the level of expression that these skillfully applied prosthetics allow for. You just, you really feel like they exist. They're, they're not people underneath it. This, this is a separate race. I will say that some of them really ham it up, but they are supposed to be just pure evil, you know. It again goes into, oh, actually, I wasn't done with the effects, come to think of it. It's again a good blend of CGI and practical effects with, I've already mentioned prosthetics and other makeup. We have sets, miniatures, and yeah, really impeccable CGI. You really can't tell where live action ends and CGI takes over. And Andy Serkis, again, as Gollum and Smeagol, is just astounding. I, he, he is a truly talented actor. And the, yes, the themes are, again, you know, those of friendship, hope, love, loss, sacrifice. 
and the Frodo again gets to do more, you know, Elijah Wood gets to act more than he did in the first one, now not just constantly looking terrified or about to cry, he really has to, it, it's especially as the ring takes over more that before watching this, I don't think I real excuse me, thought that he would be able to pull something like that off. But yeah, he really does fantastic with the material, and it's it's a fantastic dichotomy to consider the image of purity he was when we meet him in the first one to how far he has come now. And yeah, the, the guy can act. Almost called him a kid. I think he might actually be slightly older than me. I'm not entirely sure. And the the various locations are again nice and distinct. Like I said, you know, Minas Tirith, the city is just a sight to behold. It's really something to take in, and yeah, they they really did fantastic with with that. That's something that you don't really forget again, like with the creature designs. Now, the like with the second one, most things have been introduced by now, and there aren't that many new lands or new characters. So, I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.